You've waited a long time. Who's my favorite student? No. And Sir Key. She gets everything right. Think about it. Here we go. Number one. A plus B. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it. Vector A looks like this. Vector B looks like that. So for you to get one mark, I need to see a resultant. I need to see a line going down and to the right with an arrow on the end of it. That's what gets you the one mark. That's the answer. If you didn't give me that line right there, mark in the take home quiz if you want to get it out, please. If you didn't finish it, that's okay, but you'll try it later. If you just drew that, that would be like saying if I asked you on a math test, what's six plus three? And saying six plus three, which is technically right, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. So I want to see the resultant. If you labeled it, that's fine. That is vector A plus B. You didn't have to label it. Then if I gave you numbers, you could take it from there. B plus A. Well, if I do B plus A, I'm going to go vector B and then tip to tail, vector A. And you'll notice number one and number two give you the same resultant which they should, because 5 plus 6 is 6 plus 5. When you're adding vectors, it doesn't make a difference. Had a lot of questions about question 3. Vector C plus vector B. Well, okay. Vector C goes like this. How do I add two vectors? Draw them. So vector B is going to go like that. And the resultant is going to be from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. Now, this one, you would have to use the sine law and the cosine law if I gave you numbers to solve it. Or you would have to break vector C, the yucky one, up into its horizontal and vertical components. And then you could do the whole thing with Sokotoa. I notice that number four and number three are technically the same question. So for number four, I should get that as well. Number four, I'm going to draw over here. So there's vector B, there's vector C, and lo and behold, I do get the same vector as question number three, the same resultant as question number three. What would vector A plus vector C look like? Well, vector A goes straight across. Vector C goes like that. There is A plus C. What would A plus B plus C look like? Well, we don't add three vectors. We add two, get an answer, and then add the third. So I started with the easier ones. I said, OK, I'm going to go vector A plus vector B, which would be that one. And if I add vector C to it, you know what? I think the resultant is that whole thing there, I think. Number seven, 2A. How do you multiply a vector <coughs> by a scalar? Well, there... It would have to go past because that right there, that little chunk, is the first two vectors. That little chunk is the third vector. So I have to add that to that. If I, that's vector C. Okay, that's that's A plus B in red. Okay, A plus B is that. That's what it results in. In other words, if I'm going five plus six plus eight. I'm going 11 plus 8 with numbers, 19. I'm going, oh, A plus B plus C. I'm going A plus B. And then I'm going to add C to it, which would be that one there. Tip to tail. The two red ones are tip to tail. And so the resultant, I think, is the long one there. Okay? By the way, you were out of the room and you missed my favorite joke. This is my favorite student, Anne Serkey. She gets everything right. Think about it. Okay, here we go. No, he figured it out. How would I do 2A? 1A? 2A. Uh, that should be the same length, sorry. Ish. 
A plus D. If you just said zero, I'll give you full credit, I think it would look like this. And you end up back where you started from. I'm not quite sure how I would draw it, but I think as long as you somehow indicated, they cancel each other out. Uh, the other way you can have zero is if you have a full triangle with three vectors, but you end up back where you started from. This plus this plus that, tip to tail, tip to tail, tip to tail, that would also get you back to where you started from. That would be a net force of zero if it was a force vector equation. That would be a net displacement of zero if it was displacements. I'd have to see the situation. B plus D. Down, okay. B plus D. That way, yes, I think. 2B, or not to, never mind. Um, I don't know. I need to see. Show you're you're gonna lawyer with me after. Just hang on. Okay. Two uh, B would be two of those. Donk, donk. A line twice as long as B. Two C would be two of those. Two A plus D. What was D? Oh, okay. 2a plus d would look like this. 2a plus d. I think you end up kind of halfway back, or basically, I think you almost end up with one single a. Yep. Yep. I didn't give you numbers, and I'm, I'm, we're kind of assuming the vectors are the same length. They look it. So you're going to get one mark for each of those. You can give yourself a score out of 12. If you need to lawyer with me, now is the time to bring it up. Those of you that had me last year, this will probably be review. You ready? Sure. Got your formula sheet out like I've said several times? Yep. Good. Review of kinematics, the four main kinematics equations. First of all, acceleration is defined as a change in velocity over a given time interval. In math notation, we wrote it this way. Our symbol for acceleration was a lowercase a. Our symbol for change in was a V. Our symbol for, or sorry, our symbol for change in was a delta. Our symbol for velocity was a V with a vector. Our symbol for time was a T. But change in anything is always final minus initial. So instead of writing delta V, we wrote it last year as V final minus the initial. And we also got a bit sloppy. Time is always a change in, and because it's always a change in over time, no pun intended, we stopped putting the triangle in front of it. There's just no way to measure time without starting and stopping a stopwatch, which means you're always going, what's your final time? What's your initial time? Usually zero. That's the change in. So we stopped putting the delta in front of the T. Except when I gave you this equation last year, I got the VF by itself, times the T plus the VI. This is the equation that you saw last year. VF equals VI plus AT. This one is on your formula sheet. You don't need to memorize it. Many of you memorized it because you got sick of looking it up, which is the only reason you really should memorize something, because you're lazy. Some caveats. This assumes uniform or unchanging acceleration. If we have a changing acceleration, it gets ugly and you really need calculus. Where would you have a changing acceleration? Rocket ships are a classic one because who remembers from last year, F equals what, what? MA, as a rocket ship burns fuel, its mass gets smaller, but the force stays the same, so the acceleration increases. That's why if you've ever watched, for example, the space shuttle launch on TV or a video of it, you may say, that's accelerating really slow, and I heard astronauts pull like eight Gs. Yeah, just before they go full weightless, that's when they're pulling the most Gs, because that's when they're dealing with the smallest mass, biggest acceleration. If we have uniform acceleration, we can find the average speed, which is written either V average, or it, technically it's written V bar, but in type font, when I shrink it down, it's tough to tell whether that's a bar or a vector sign. So I will almost always write V average. But if any of you do any stats, 
with Mr. Gerard or Mr. Camozzi, that's the symbol for the average value x bar. That's the average of all your data or all your value. And we can find it, well, how do I find an average? Oscar, if you have $10 and I have $20, what do we average between us? I have, you have, how, do I... how did you figure out 15? What did you do with the 10 and the 20 to get 15 as an answer? So, the average is VF plus VI divided by 2. Or VI plus VF divided by 2. That's on your formula sheet, although we're almost never going to use that one, but we're going to use this one and our definition of acceleration to derive the rest of the equations. A little note, if you're accelerating constantly, not changing, the average always occurs halfway between the smallest and biggest velocities, minimum and maximum. That can sometimes be a handy shortcut. Displacement. Displacement is defined as the average times time. And so if I take this and stick it into there, I will get D equals VF plus VI over 2 times T. That was one that I included on your formula sheet last year. We didn't use it much, but we did it once in a while. I didn't include it this year because it is redundant. It comes out of the idea of average and the realizing that displacement is your average velocity times time. But we're going to now take this one step further. Since VF equals VI plus AT, I'm going to replace the VF in this equation with VI plus AT. I'm going to get a new equation that looks like this. D equals big bracket VI plus AT. And then there's still a plus VI all over 2 times T. In the brackets there, I see a VI plus a VI. Hey, those are like terms. What's 1VI plus 1VI? So I can now rewrite this as displacement equals 2VIs plus AT times T all over 2. I'm now going to multiply this T into the brackets. When I do that, I'm going to get D equals 2 VIT plus AT squared all over 2. And some of you might see where we're headed. Since both of these fractions are being divided by 2, I can split up this big top fraction. And I can write it as d equals 2 vit over 2 plus a t squared over 2. Why would I do that? What happens to these first two twos in this first term here? Well, that's kind of nice. And Cole, can you see what I'm ending up with? Our old friend d equals VIT plus a half AT squared. This was our displacement equation. Ta-da! You awake now? <laughs> then we also had an equation that had uh, a bunch of squareds in it. Remember that one? We can get that one as well. Distance is defined as average speed times time. Start out with this same line right here, but instead of substituting in for VF, I'm going to substitute in for time. Time is VF minus VI over A. So I'm going to replace that T with that. I get D equals... VF plus VI over 2 times VF 
minus vi over a. Good yawn. These are fractions. We're multiplying fractions. Multiplying fractions is the easiest of the operations. It's top times bo top, bottom times bottom. I'm going to do the bottom first. What's 2 times a? Just plain old 2a. On the bottom, I get a 2a. On the top, you know what? This is what you call probably in math 10 foil. I would go vf times vf, which is? Then I would have a minus vi vf and a plus vi vf. What's a minus vi vf plus vi vf? And then I have a minus vi squared. Chad, you see where we're going, don't you? Then last year, I got the vf squared by itself. I multiplied the 2a over. I added the vi squared over. And that's where this equation came from here. You can put it in the box. vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. These are the big three this year. vf equals vi plus at. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. You have these all on your formula sheet. We used them enough last year. Probably some of you still memorized them just because you got sick of looking them up. That's fine. You'll notice I didn't give you the D equals bracket VI plus VF close bracket over 2 times D. It's kind of a redundant one. It still exists, but it can be derived from others. To solve a problem, I gave you two approaches last year. I gave you DALP. What did DALP stand for? And then the other one that I used with my students last year is this acronym here, the phrase DFIC. And this is because coming into physics, many of you were terrified of word problems and math, and I had to let you know that actually it's not so bad. The D stands for list your data. The F stands for Find a formula that contains your data. The I stands for insert the numbers. And the C stands for calculate or crunch the answer. This is just a tool to give you something to hang your hat on. You'll notice as we got better last year, we didn't always list our data. We went often straight to the equation because we could. But OK. A dragster has an acceleration of 38 meters per second squared. It begins from rest. How fast will the dragster be going after 2.1 seconds? Matt, what's A asking me to find? Good. Velocity, and I yelled at all of you last year, which one? So this year, you'll always tell me whether it's the initial or the final. It wants me to find VF. And so what I taught you last year was I almost always wrote that down. VF equals question mark, because I'd written something down and I felt better. Then I went back and looked at Actually, not numbers so much, Matt, as units. I said, units are worth memorizing. And if I ever say something is worth memorizing, it's really worth memorizing. Matt, what's that 38? How do you know? Even if it hadn't said acceleration, you remember that meters per second squared is acceleration. And so you're really just going through a mental checklist. From rest, I always told you, underline those words, either actually or at least in your mind, always notice that. The I was zero. What's that, 2.1? Because it's seconds. And then I said to you something like, I'm looking for an equation that has a VF, a VI, an A, and a T in it. There is one. And you would have said back to me, and I normally would have said, get the VF by itself. But you would have said, hey, it already is. The final velocity is going to be, do I need to write VI, Matt? So I'm just going to go AT. It's going to be 38 times 2.1. I can do that in my head. 38 times 38 is going to be 76. 38 times 0.1 is 3.8. It's going to be uh, 79.8. Double check me. Am I right? Okay. Units meters per second. By the way, technically, since they didn't give me a direction, 
I only found the speed, and that's why I said how fast in my question. I didn't actually say, give me the final velocity, because if it was the velocity, I'd like to see a north or a 23 degrees south of east or something. Well done. Well done. Cool. What's B want me to find? Which physics concept is that? Distance. Is it the same time as in part A? I'm not going to relist my data then because I listed it all here. I'm just going to write for part B, D equals question mark. Suggestions, Cole. Which equation could I go with? Owen, oh, look on your formula sheet, not in the handout, So, because you want to train your eyes to look in the right place on the formula sheet. So we're in the top of the formula sheet, in the unit one, and you'll spot where they are. That's a much better way to train your eyes, because your eyes will actually subconsciously glance at the right equation without you realizing it. Say it again, Cole. Why'd you waste my time? What's VI? So what's VIT? So I'm just going to write D equals AT squared over 2, or a half AT squared. A is uh, 38. T squared is 2.1. Don't forget the squared, common mistake, over 2. By the way, 38 meters per second squared, about how many Gs is that? Who remembers from last year? Don't need a calculator, actually. Stop, McKenzie. What's the acceleration due to gravity exactly? What's a nice round number that you can do math with? 10. So 38 divided by 10, 3.8. It's about 4 Gs. So this person's pulling about 4 Gs. It's about right in a dragster. What'd you get for this? This I can't do in my head. 38 times 2.1 squared divided by 2. What'd you get? Good way to stay awake is to follow along on your calculator, by the way, boys and girls. Mackenzie's squinting. Did you get it wrong? No. Nope. What'd you get, Ben? 31.84? Um, can't be. It's got to be further than that. I'm just visualizing this. It's a dragster. I assure you, in 2.1 seconds, it's moved down the track. Owen. Anybody else? Oh, wow. We have wide discrepancy. Did you remember to divide by 2? I don't think you did. 83.8? Round it off properly? And that's going to be a distance, so it's meters. C. How long will it take the dragster to reach a velocity of 126 meters per second? For my international students, the phrase how long is tricky because sometimes it can be time. How long was the movie? Two hours. Sometimes it can mean distance. How long is the football field? 100 meters. So you'll have to read the context carefully. I did that on purpose. Adam, is this one asking me to find time or distance? I think time. T equals question mark. V final just changed from what it was in part A, so I'm going to relist my data. That 126 must be V final. What's V initial? Like the Canucks' chances of winning the Stanley Cup this year? What's A? Can I use T equals 2.1? Why can't I? And Yeah, so I know that if it was 2.1, the VF apparently would have been 79.8. It's going to be, in fact, I think time is going to be bigger than 2.1. Also, what were they asking me to find? It'd be a silly question if I could say T equals 2.1 and tried to find time. The answer would be 2.1. And, and you're laughing, but I, like I've seen kids do that sometimes. They'll use a time. It's asking you to find the time. I don't think I would have given you the time if I was asking you to find it. Which equation? And get the T by itself. So we used, for my new students, this equation here. But one of the strategies that I taught my students last year was rewrite equations in your head. 
it's much nicer to reach that point. Way less memorization, way less writing, and probably more accurate. Most of you are better at doing math with letters than with numbers. And so it's VF equals VI plus AT minus the VI over divide by A. And I'm going to get 126 minus 0. I'm not going to bother typing the minus 0 over 38. 3.32. Anybody else? Yep. Round it off properly. Units, Adam? Seconds. Direction? This is a scalar no matter what, so no direction. D. How far will the drag strip travel once it hits 153 meters per second? I think D is asking me to find D. We've got a new number, that 153. Okay, what is it? What's it telling me? Okay, the yeah. F. Which also means I have to be very careful. I can only use stuff that I know is not changing for the whole question. Uh, can I use the acceleration? Yeah, we did say we're going to assume acceleration is constant. Um, I can't use time. Oh, I can still use VI. Zero. Which equation has a D, a VF, an A, and a VI in it? There only is one. Nope, I don't know time. Can't use that one. So look elsewhere. Matt. Okay. The equation I'm going to use is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. But then I'm going to say, Matt, get the D by itself. Oh, you didn't even bother saying the VI squared because it's zero. I'll put it in for my new students who are going, where the heck did it go? But thank you. I noticed. So it's going to be 153 squared, most common mistake, forgetting the squared, writing it, but forgetting to type it because you're so proud that you've entered everything. Uh, I'll put the minus zero squared for some of you who like that, but I'm happier that Matt said I can skip that. Divided by 2 times 38. Um, I yelled at you last year, is this a fraction? Brackets around the top, brackets around the bottom. Or some of you got a good two-line display calculator that actually has a top and the bottom. Regardless, uh, I'm going to go uh, 153 squared divided by bracket 2 times 38. Do you get uh, 308? Units, meters. Uh, by the way, I did steal these numbers from a dragster website, so these should be reasonably accurate. The acceleration, after that, everything takes care of itself. Although probably in real life, a dragster doesn't accelerate at a constant rate. You probably have your maximum acceleration at the beginning and less acceleration a bit later on, but whatever. Almost done. When the dragster hits a top speed of 132 meters per second, the chute, the parachute, is deployed. A. If it takes 12 seconds for the dragster to come to a stop, what's its average acceleration? Well, I'm pretty sure A is asking me to find A. What's that 162? Not VF? VI. And that was a common mistake last year. Kids always thought, well, VI is zero, VF is the bigger number. Not if we're slowing down. By the way, are we speeding up or slowing down? So what's that going to tell us about our acceleration answer? What are we expecting? It's going to be negative. If I get a negative, I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to probably say, I think I did this right. Uh, VI is 162. What's VF? How do you know? Comes to a stop. And I need one more thing. Oh. 12 time. So Owen, we're looking on our formula sheet now. I'm going to pick on you for the equation that has an A, a VI, a VF, and a T, and nothing else. By the way, those of you that I taught last year, you're probably at the point where you actually don't look for these. You know, no D. I'm looking for the equation without a D, because that's probably the better way to do it. Which equation, Owen, my friend? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you even got the A by itself? 
you just impressed me. Thank you. You bought into formula manipulation. A equals VF minus VI over T. Yeah, VF equals VI plus AT, and then we rewrite it, hopefully in our heads. It's going to be 100 and, oh no, 0 minus 162 all over 12. Brackets around the top. And I get negative 13.5 meters per second squared. The negative doesn't freak me out. I'm like, that's probably good. Roughly 1.4 Gs. Again, we're going to assume this is a constant acceleration. In real life, I don't think it is. I have a feeling in real life the parachute would decelerate you the most at the beginning with a mighty jerk, and then as you slow down, the acceleration would also slow down, but we can't do that kind of math without calculus. So this is where I said at the beginning of physics 11, most of what I'm teaching you is technically wrong. We have to improvise a little bit. B. B. Nick, what's B want me to find? I think so. How do I know it's not asking me for the time, even though it kind of sounds like it might be? How do I know that it's not asking me for the time, even though it kind of sounds like it might be? They gave me the time. It's got to be distance. Okay, so don't be scared to use a process of elimination here. D equals... Is it the same situation as part A? I'm not going to relist all my data. I could. Which equation, Nick? I can't hear you. I'm sorry? Okay. VF squared equals VI squared. The only issue with that is I'm having to use A, a calculated value. What's the other equation I could have used? VI is not zero. VI is not zero. So I have to keep it in. I got to be honest. Because no matter what, I'm having to use an, a calculated value, it's a toss-up. I might go with this one just because the D is by itself already. But this one, less type... Oh, wait a minute. This isn't, this isn't right. Is it? We have a VI, don't we? Yeah. Ah, so we're going to have to go VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A. I don't care which one you use. You know what? How about this half of the room? Use this equation. How about this half of the room? Use this equation. We should get the same answer both ways. And this might be how I might check my answer on a test if I had extra time before I had my test in. I would try solving a few questions different ways and if I get the same answer both ways, I probably got my parameters right as well. So you can either go 0 squared minus 162 squared, close bracket, divided by 2 times negative 13.5. The 0 squared is kind of redundant, but I'll put it in there just to show you where it would go. 972. Or you'll go 162 times 12 plus 0.5 times negative 13.5 times 12 squared. And hey, about a kilometer. That's a really quick review of what we spent days and days and days building last year. One of the things you're going to see in Physics 12 that I'm going to do often is I'm going to give you a conceptual question, a thought puzzle with no numbers to see if you can generalize. So here's one. An object starts at rest and accelerates east at a constant rate. When it's traveled 10 meters, it's moving at speed V. How fast will it be moving when it's traveled 20 meters? Select the best answer. A, V. B, more than 2V. C, exactly 2V. Or D, uh, less than 2V but more than V. You got the thought puzzle? Got the question? Is that okay? I'm not going to blurt out an answer. You know what we're going to do? We're going to vote. 
How high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. I'm positive. I'm pretty sure. I'm only voting because Mr. Duick will make fun of me if I don't vote. And Mr. Duick will make fun of you if you don't vote. Positive. Pretty sure. So again, here's the question. We're starting at rest. We're accelerating constant rate. When it's gone 10 meters, it's moving at speed V. Once it's gone 20 meters, twice as far, is it moving at speed A, V? More than twice as fast? Exactly twice as fast? Or faster, but it hasn't hit twice as fast? Who says A is the correct answer? A. Who says A, V? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Keep your hand up, Ryan. 10, 11, 11. 12. Who says B? More than twice as fast, Mr. Duick. B. This is interesting. Exactly twice as fast if you go twice as far. 4, 5, 6, 7. Faster, but not twice as fast. That hasn't hit twice as fast yet. Here. So on most of your tests, there will be in the written section a thought problem like this. I call these using principles of physics questions because on the old provincial exam, that was the trigger phrase that they would always use. I will give you a thought problem. One way to solve these is to make up nice numbers and just crunch the numbers. That's the entry level, but I'll always give you full marks for that. I will often try and show you lovely algebraic solutions that would work for anything, but you're not there yet. I'm going to make up nice numbers. I'm going to make up an acceleration. What would a nice acceleration be? Don't use 10 because a 10 shows up there. Don't use 20 because a 20 shows up there, and I don't want to get silly mixed up. So, Matt, give me a nice number to make as an acceleration. Five, you sure. I'll jot that down for my specific example here. If it starts at rest and it travels 10 meters, I can actually find VF. Do it. I think I'm going to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2a, d. That will give me vf squared, how to get rid of a squared. Okay, so it's going to be 2 times 5 times 10 square root. By a fluke, we even ended up with a nice even answer, Matt. Nice pick on the 5. That doesn't always happen. But if we're accelerating at 5, after 10 meters, we're going 10 meters per second. Now, let's repeat that with a distance of 20. Here's the nice thing. I think I can just backspace and change this 10 to a, and then square root. What's the correct answer? A, B, C, or D? Wow. Because of that squared. You will be going faster, but you're not going twice as fast, 20. You're not going more than twice as fast. And I got to be honest, those of you that picked A, you're accelerating. You can't be going at the same velocity 10 meters later. You're going to be speeding up the whole time. Is that all right? So correct answer D, where it says using, uh, oh, I should then write, uh, I'll call this situation one, situation two, VF equals 14.1. Where it says, using principles of physics, I would just draw an arrow pointing to my work. Yes. That just means that the acceleration isn't changing. In other words, the acceleration will be 5 the entire time in Matt's example. Or if you used 8, it would be 8 the entire time. It's not changing its acceleration. It's speeding up, but its velocity isn't constant. Its acceleration is constant. Have I convinced you okay? Many of those in your future. So we can write in the yep. Or I would do it up there and just draw an arrow pointing, whatever. Give me some kind of a convincing proof. You could also do it completely algebraically, and if you did it completely algebraically, you would find, oh, 
after twice as far, I'm root two as fast. Not twice as fast, but that much faster. If you did it purely algebraically. Eh, if you're not sure, just make up nice numbers. What's your homework? One is good, two is good. Four is good. I skipped three. Six is good. Seven is tricky. Seven, you have to break it up into two parts while you're on the slide and then once you're hitting the ground. Um. Yeah, we can do nine. It's wordy, but you can do it. Ten is good. And if you want to get a head start on the ultimate review, you're now capable of doing those questions. You don't have to, but if you want to get a head start, you can. Remember for the ultimate review, the answers are attached to the last page, and they're also a full showing all my steps, handwritten answer key on pitmath.com. Did I skip what? I don't know.